At the end of the movie Terminator 2, there's a scene where the T-1000 robot is hit by a stream of liquid nitrogen. In a matter of seconds, it freezes to the asphalt and completely loses the ability to move. And when Iron Arnie shoots it with a pistol, the Terminator crumbles into small shards. What if you tried the same trick with a nuclear bomb? Would it be possible to neutralize the bomb or would freezing it provoke an explosion? In this video, you'll find out if you can survive one of the most dangerous experiments on Earth. Meet the Gadget, the world's first nuclear bomb, developed by the United States as part of the Trinity test. It has a capacity of 21 kilotons. This is the sister bomb of the famous Fat Man, which had the same power and was dropped on Nagasaki on August 9, 1945. On that day, Nagasaki was completely destroyed. 74,000 people died as a result of the nuclear explosion. To freeze the gadget like the robot from the Terminator, you'll need to completely immerse it in liquid nitrogen. Since nitrogen evaporates on contact with air, we need a special Dewar flask the size of a car. Let's leave the nuclear bomb in the vessel for one hour and see what happens. Now, let's take a sledgehammer and in the best YouTube traditions, we will hit the frozen bomb really hard. As a result, only the outer shell broke away from the bomb, but the core remained intact. Now you can see with your own eyes the insides of an atomic bomb. It's an aluminum sphere with a cylinder of metallic uranium-238 inside. If we open the cylinder, then inside we'll find the plutonium nucleus, which is what creates the huge explosion. This is the part that we need to freeze in order to try to defuse the bomb. But first, you need to get to it. So we'll freeze the aluminum sphere and smash it with a sledgehammer just like we did to the outer shell of the bomb. The same steps must be taken with the uranium cylinder. And only then will you get to the very heart of the warhead, the plutonium core. If you manage not to die from the penetrating radiation and actually reach the core, you'll be unable to stop the entropy of nuclear decay. Free neutrons will literally crash into other plutonium nuclei, releasing a huge amount of energy. A chain reaction will happen almost instantly. This will lead to an imminent explosion that will blow everything within a radius of tens of kilometers or tens of miles off of the face of the Earth. Liquid nitrogen can stop chemical processes, but not nuclear fusion. Once the decay of plutonium has begun, it can't be stopped, even with a temperature close to absolute zero. Therefore, if there's a plutonium bomb in your yard, don't try to diffuse it with nitrogen. Better to move quickly to another city to live. It's another matter if the bomb is not nuclear. It's quite possible to neutralize such a warhead by freezing it. At the end of World War II, British sappers used liquid nitrogen to clear unexploded German shells. When the nitrogen hit the fuse, the bomb's battery froze, after which it turned into a heap of scrap metal and no longer posed a danger to humans. But what if a nuclear bomb has already exploded? Is it possible to prevent the consequences of the explosion by by freezing everything around. To neutralize the consequences of the explosion of the gadget, with a capacity of 21 kilotons, 210 million kilograms of liquid nitrogen would be required. In order to lift such a quantity, it would take 10,500 of the largest Mi-26 helicopters which are used in firefighting. As soon as all these helicopters pour this mass of nitrogen into the nuclear mushroom cloud, then a real apocalypse will begin. In the first minutes, you'll see the liquid nitrogen turn from a colorless liquid to a bluish one. After that, red lightning will begin to strike from the heavens, which will be accompanied by loud sounds of thunder. This is due to the radiation from the explosion. If you irradiate liquid nitrogen with a neutron flux, it becomes explosive. This produces liquid oxygen and ozone. These two elements will lead to non-stop explosions. 
But what comes next is even more terrible. A nuclear mushroom cloud is very hot, while liquid nitrogen is very cold. When heated, nitrogen becomes a gas and its volume increases by 700 times. In our attempt to put out the nuclear explosion, we get a radioactive cloud with a volume of about 118 trillion liters. After a while, radioactive fallout will fall from the cloud to the ground, which will destroy all living things. If you get caught in such a rain, you'll either die in a couple of hours or in a few days from acute radiation sickness. As you can see, extinguishing a nuclear explosion with liquid nitrogen is a rather boring task. Merely a localized apocalypse is not what I need. There is something more ambitious – the total extinction of all mankind. In order to do this, let's fill the Earth's core with nitrogen. To get to the core, you need to drill a tunnel to the center of our planet. The core is located at a depth of almost 3,000 kilometers. For comparison, the deepest hole in the Earth that humanity could make up until now is at the Chivo oil well in the Sea of Ohotsk. The depth of the well is 15 kilometers. It's deeper than the Mariana Trench, but it's still far from the core. So, let's suppose that people did manage to make a hole in the Earth 3,000 kilometers deep. And we were able to pass through the red-hot magma, overcome the outer liquid core, and reach the solid metal core, the temperature of which is the same as on the surface of the sun. In order to extinguish it, we will stock up on nitrogen. We take into account that the Earth's core is 30% of the entire Earth's mass, and the diameter of the core is 1,300 kilometers. So, to extinguish it, 144 sextillion kilograms of liquid nitrogen are needed. The mass of our satellite, the Moon, is just 70 sextillion kilograms. Now, suppose we manage to get a mass of liquid nitrogen weighing the equivalent of about two of our moons and poured it into the core of the Earth. If, up to this point, you've not managed to fly to another planet, it's time to hurry up. Indeed, very soon the Earth will become uninhabitable. When the inner core of our planet freezes, the outer core will stop rotating. The good news? Earth's magma will no longer heat up volcanoes, so they will stop erupting. The bad news is that the Earth will lose its magnetic field forever. The solar wind will blow away our atmosphere in a few hours. All living things will die in minutes from horrific doses of cosmic radiation. The lethal gas, which will become liquid nitrogen in the process of extinguishing the core, will speed up the destruction of life. A cloud will quickly rise from the bowels of the Earth, reach stratospheric heights, and displace any remaining oxygen from the atmosphere. The oceans and seas will dry up in just a few days. All vegetation on the planet will also disappear. The once blooming blue Earth will begin to resemble Mars with its lifeless landscape. Human civilization, as the solar system knew it, will cease to exist forever. The charred stone of our planet will wander aimlessly around the sun, and life here is unlikely to ever be revived again. Fortunately, such an experiment is just a figment of my twisted imagination. Whatever heights science has reached, we'll never manage to find such a monstrous amount of liquid nitrogen here on Earth in order to extinguish the core of our planet. But experiments with liquid nitrogen have not been cancelled. Scientific enthusiasts will always find something to freeze. Perhaps, in a few years, we'll find a new, hereto unknown application for this substance. What would you like to freeze with liquid nitrogen? Write your ideas in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.